a period in my life when the dream of being an artist had actually completely fallen apart. When this was a number of years ago, I was diagnosed with permanent nerve damage in my drawing hand. Now, the kind of art that I fell in love with when I was younger was pointillism. And many of you know this big famous picture. And I can flip to another page and give you a little glimpse of the artist's style. So you can see the dots there in the paint and how it all comes together. But this big famous picture, I think it's like 11, 12 feet wide. It's absolutely massive. And this kind of art became my, my absolute fascination. I loved it. And I would spend hours and hours and hours working away on projects. And what happened is I went from having, well, working with a Sharpie to working with a 0 0.005 millimeter pen. And let me share how small that dot is with you. That is a tiny, tiny dot. And so what would happen is as I was working on pointillism, this kind of art stippling by another name, I would end up literally sitting there for hours, my head bent over, tapping away these little tiny dots to make a picture. And as I was doing that, I got better. And bit by bit, I worked with a smaller and smaller pen, but still working for hours at a time. Well, anytime you do something for hours at a time, eventually your arm gets fatigued. Well, that fatigue actually led to my hand shaking. And when my hand would shake, well, I would just hold the pen tighter. And then I would have more fatigue and I'd hold even tighter. I just had this death grip on the pen trying to keep it steady. But then bit by bit, after a few years, I decided, you know, I'm like, it's been a while. Maybe I could get back into art. You know, what would it look like to be an artist again? And as I was thinking about that, a friend of mine who, you know, saw my hand shaking all the time because, you know, even when I drink coffee or something, my hand will shake. She was like, well, why don't you go to a neurologist about the shake? And I was like, well, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> you know, I probably should have done it a while ago. And so I finally found my way to doc the doctor's office. I went through some different tests, and then I was diagnosed with permanent nerve damage in my drawing hand. And again, that was, that was a real blow. And I'm sitting there trying to figure out, you know, geez, you know, what's, what's this future going to hold? What is my life going to look like? And the doctor, you know, he's sitting right there with me as I'm thinking about it. He's watching me. And he's like, well, if your hand shakes, you know, why don't you just embrace the shake? And I was like, because I don't want to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I came to the doctor for a diagnosis and medication. That was my hope. And all he was going to give me was words of encouragement. And I was like, oh, geez, you know, what do I do with that? It's like, OK, so I didn't like the advice. I left. I ignored him. I went about my routines. But it was a few weeks later. I was heading home from college on the bus to my apartment. And I was thinking about his words, this idea, embrace the shake. And I was like, well, you know, what would it look like to embrace the shake? So that day, when I got home, I decided I was going to put a piece of paper on the wall. I grabbed a pencil, and I just started letting my hands shake and shake, and I started making a bunch of scribble pictures. And even though this wasn't the kind of art that I was ultimately passionate about, you know, it felt great. And more importantly, once I embraced the shake, I realized that I could still make art. I just had to find a different approach to making the kind of art that I wanted. 